Hope you guys had a fantastic Halloween. Got a lot of candy in your faces because this one's going to suck. What is up, Finn fans? Rip the Band-Aid off, man. I just got to rip the Band-Aid off. No beating around the bush. Rip the Band-Aid off. <laughs> oh, man. The, the Jets just beat the Texans. Good for them. I could pile on. I could be like, they're going to say we're back and all that stuff. But you know what? Enjoy it. Enjoy. Because you know for a fact if we beat Buffalo, we're going to we're going to be relentless relentless but i will say this we're going to go into this we're going to preview it injury breakdown pff five things i'm going to give you my score prediction what i think is going to happen in this game but i will say this because i on twitter have been very pessimistic which is not of the norm of me um but you guys know me we're very close to fifty thousand subs you guys have been rocking with me to the new people. I'm going to give you a little a little preview of DDW or Doug. That's my name. I roll with the punches. The team does well. Good. Need to work on some things, but this is a good team. We're going to do good. If the team does bad, I'm going to tell you the team does bad. I'm not one of those. We're always going to win. We're always going to do this. This hurrah, hurrah. Like I had us losing to the Patriots because I had no faith in our offense. And then the offense kind of showed up. And then I'm like, hey, you got more time. You should beat the Colts. And then they did it. And I'm like, oh, crap. And that two of them. See what I'm saying? Like I give you reasons. But I'm always like trying to give you, you know, it's this isn't going to be fun. But I will say this. Stick to the end. Stick to the predictions because I got something for you guys. I'll say that. Stick to the predictions. So let's jump into this. We're going to start with the injury report, and we're going to start with the Miami Dolphins. Jeez. <laughs> Hi. Now you'll see that there are some that could be taken off. Right? To take it off. And you can see me a little bit more. But as you can see here... We have four did not participate in Julian Hills, uh, Javon Holland, Cater Kohu, and Zach Sealer. I almost called him Jack Sealer. Now, Sealer, hearing some things, like I said, I'll probably make a video tomorrow, give you more of an update because they'll come out and they'll say like game status and who practiced on Friday and stuff, but we really don't get a good idea until like Saturday or Friday night. So I will get, I will make another video tomorrow for you guys, but for Sealer, I'm hearing that he was in good spirits. He was there. He didn't have an eye patch on. He didn't have any protection or anything. So we'll see. Uh, Cater's probably not going to go. Julian Hill's probably not going to go. And I doubt Javon Holland's going to go. You know, he had the broken bone in his hand. He got that fixed. He played. Then he got hurt again. I, I doubt those four are going to play. You got the limited. Toronto will go. Jordan Brooks, I could see going. River Craycraft, his 21 days has started. Don't need to rush him back. Storm Duck went from did not practice to limited. Maybe we get him. Tyree Kills, rest slash foot. Uh, Al Kingle pops up at the calf. Benito Jones, limited. Now, and then you have Emmanuel Ogba, who's dealing with a bicep injury. Supposedly, it's a, it's a, a bigger bicep injury than you would think, and he's playing through it. So... The only ones I'm really worried about is top four did not practice. But again, I just want to reiterate something because a lot of people will look at the limited and be like, oh, God, the sky's falling. And again, you, you heard my intro. Literally, the definition of limited participation is less than 100% of a player's normal reps. If you remember, Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle were limited last week. And some were saying that the sky's falling and then they played the full game. Less than 100% of a player's normal reps. I'll say it one more time. If the player's normal reps is 80 and he does 75 reps because he's just like, hey, I'm good, they have to put him down as limited. So just, just, just stop worrying about it. Plain and simple. Stop worrying about it. And then we have the Buffalo Bills. Looks like a lot. It isn't a lot. There is no point in having all of those. Their fullback went from limited to did not practice, and uh, Christian Benford went from full to limited. 
So again, he went from a full practice, which means 100% of players' normal reps, to less than 100%. And then you have Terrell Bernard, who was dealing with some type of injury. We'll see if he plays. Murray Cooper's dealing with a wrist injury, and Curtis Samuel is dealing with a pectoral injury outside of that. They're pretty flipping healthy. And I think they're getting um, Von Miller back, who kind of ate Christian Wilkins' lunch money uh, last time. Ate his lunch money. Yeah, because that's what you do. He took his lunch money, Doug. Jeez Louise. Um, what are you going to do? They're healthier than us. Much healthier than us because we decided to go out and sign aged veterans who were injury prone. What are you going to do? <gasps> what are you going to do? Let's break it down and uh, start with the defense. Now, this is our defense versus their offense. We have the sixth best defense. They did not show up in the second half of last week. We have fifth, fifth best passing defense. They did not show up in the second half of last week. The passing uh, rushing defense is 16th. They showed up. I think we held them to less than 100 all together. Like all of their rushers were less than 100 yards. I think it was like 88 yards. Scoring defense is 16th. Sacks 30th. That is Putrid. I have a video tomorrow about that. We will talk about that in injury updates tomorrow. Give you as much content as I possibly can. Third down defense. We used to have very good third down defense. We forced a lot of three and outs, except for the second half of that game. And takeaways, we were 26th. We got five takeaways. Five. I think we got two fumbles, three interceptions. Two of those three interceptions came from defensive linemen. And you look at their offense. They got a pretty good offense: thirteenth in uh, total offense, fifteenth in passing, twelfth uh, in rushing, fifth in scoring. Well, number one in sacks allowed, but that comes with having Josh Allen as your quarterback. Third down offense is sixteenth in their giveaways. Is first. They have been very good at not giving the ball away. But and Bills fans. Don't take this too personally. Josh Allen is still top 10 in turnover-worthy plays, which means he still puts the ball where it shouldn't be. It's just he's getting very lucky this year with either the Bills getting the fumbles back or the opposing corner safeties, defensive linemen, linebackers, whoever, are dropping interceptions. But you look at this and you're like, wow, this should be a good game. You got the sixth total defense facing the 13th total offense. And, you know, you look at their passing and their rushing. And it's kind of a very even kill game. No, I have no faith in this defense. After what I saw last week in that second half, even if Sealer does decide to play or does play and is able to play, I have no faith in this defense. Zero, zilch, nada, bupka, <laughs> nothing. No faith. Well, let's look at our offense versus their defense. Our offense, we have the 22nd total offense. If Tua was playing the past four games, that number would be so different because we saw what happened when Tua came in here, and we marched straight down the field on the first drive and got the touchdown. We scored 27 points out of eight offensive drives. Five of them were scores. Different world when you have your starting quarterback back there, but who would have thought? Passing is 26. Again, could, it's much different. Rushing is ninth. That is actually true. Our scoring is 32nd. I think that would be different. Again, if two was there, we score 27 points. Sacks allowed 18th with 19. Third down offense is sixth. Not too bad. And giveaways is seventh with eight giveaways. We all know about the three interceptions from Tua before he got hurt and the safety last week. And then we're facing the 16th better defense in the 15th pass, 15th rush, 6th scoring, 12th sacks, 22nd, 3rd down. So their 3rd down defense isn't too great, and their 6th in takeaways. I will say this. If the Dolphins have an iota of a chance of winning this game, it is the Dolphins' offense. And then hoping and praying we get a stop, a miracle of a stop from the defense in a certain situation. But again, I'm not holding my breath. Let's go into my favorite part of these. BFFF, bum, 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 bum. I didn't want to go too far because then I might get sued. Yeah, Monday Night Football. So we have the Dolphins offense versus their defense. Now, per PFF's rankings and ratings and all that stuff, it looks like their defense is garbage. It looks like Rousseau is their only good pass rusher and Benford is their only good corner. And outside of that, they suck per their PFF ratings and rankings. 
Me, on the other hand, I think their defense is pretty sound, especially with Ed Oliver, who, again, was eating Eichenberg's uh, lunch. Same thing with Russo and Von Miller, who would probably be going in here for Spectre. Um, their corners, I'm not too worried about. Again, Waddle and Hill kind of started to open up things more. Uh, Washington did fantastic last week, and I will talk about that, especially when it comes to special teams. You have Teron Armstead, the best tackle in football right now. Aaron Brewer did very well besides the snap, and again, it's a 50-50. I showed you, and if you think it's all on Tua, then hey, that's your prerogative. Johnu Smith had very good productive past two weeks. Tua Tungavello, 24th, even missing four games, and then Devon Achan, 19th, even though they stopped running the ball with him. This team kind of struggles with stopping the run, so I would run the ball. But hey, probably not going to. Then this is our defense versus their offense. Marcus May, not too bad. He, this is probably your one-two punch. I really wish Jordan Poyer wasn't there. And I really wish we never signed Jordan Poyer. David Long Jr. is having a horrible season. A horrible season. I actually agree with this rating of a 37. And he is dead last in linebackers. He sucked last week. And he has been very bad this whole season um ramsey and fuller i'm really happy with them smith i they need to and i'll get to it in a second agba is not too bad but again he's dealing with an injury deshaun hand campbell and robinson robinson's getting pressure but he's not finishing he keeps falling stop falling and make the sacks then you have their offense you got josh allen there's josh allen you got kincaid here the fifth best uh tight end put him on him all game. I better not see him on him. I better not see him on him. I better, well, maybe Marcus May, but <laughs> drives me nuts. Coleman's playing really well for them. Uh, Amari Cooper is now with them for what, two weeks? It's Josh Allen, man. You got to contain the man. Here, you know what we're going to do? Do you know what we're going to do? I'm busting out the pen. And I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a, a what we're going to do here. You want to contain him, right? You want to contain Josh Allen so he can't scramble out to his left and his right. Then you come in here, you get Brooks, and you blitz him up the middle. You know what I'm saying? Because then he can't step up in the pocket. That's all you got to do. You got to contain him. Good tackle. Good tackle. Not so great guards. McGovern is not bad. He's 10th. But you got to pressure him up the middle. Don't let him roll out. Because once you start letting him roll out, that's when all these things start to fall apart. And we saw it happen against um, the Arizona Cardinals. Contain this man. But I kind of get got a little ahead of myself. So that is... <laughs> I just realized, too, I didn't change the um numbers here so as i'm talking to you we are going to uh go through all this but we're going to go into the five things that i think that the miami dolphins need to do imperative to do these are the top important things in all honesty and again i'm very down and out on my team i am very down and out on my team they have played very bad even with tua coming back the offense kind of did their thing gave them nine points with what, five minutes left in the game, give or take, or, you know, however long, and just, so I'm very down and out on my team. Still a diehard fan, still will watch, still will live stream, still will cheer my head off. I'll never root for a loss, but I'm very down and out on my team. So for me, it's like 47 things they need to do if they want to beat this Buffalo Bills team, but I kind of knocked it down to the five most important ones to me. And number one on that list, if you ain't surprised, you got to run the freaking ball. Yeah, run the ball. Like, I, I, don't, I, I don't understand how that's such a hard process to understand. Run the ball. You have, you have, if they would have just, I'm all, my brain's all over the place. I apologize for, for my brain being all over the place. But if they would have just ran the ball a little bit more in the last two drives of the game all together, let me, again, my brain's all over the place all together. Devon A. Chan got 10 carries on the game, 10 carries in, in the last fourth quarter, he got two carries. 
I don't understand why, like, is he gassed after 10 carries? Now I understand he had like a 74 yard run or like a 60 something yard run, but is he get like, because we had the pitch play, which was horrible. Then we had the RPO where Tua missed Tyreek and he tried to dump it off to Ingold. And then we had the screen to A-Chan. There's your A-Chan. Um, that was blown like Tua had HM wasn't even open and Tua had pressure on his face. So he starts backtracking and trying to get it to him. It was just a horrific, you know, after we get the first down, it was just a horrific one, two, three punch in our face. They gotta run the ball more. And it's not just to score, it's not just to eat up the clock, but it's also to keep Josh Allen on the sideline. Josh Allen is just a bully to the Miami Dolphins. We beat him once out of the last 13 games. He he can't be on the field. Plain and simple. You need to run the ball. Absolutely run the ball. Contain the game. And if we're doing that, you got to contain Josh Allen. Like it's a situation where <sighs> Josh Allen, I just showed you, he he's going to get out of the pocket. And he's going to make the plays that need to be made. And I've seen it time and time and time again. I saw it against the Chiefs. Like that man is just, Josh Allen is just ridiculous. And coming out of college, everyone was like, oh, is it Rosen? Is it Allen? You know, Allen, da, da, da. And like everyone said all these things. And he went to Buffalo and had a, you know, rough couple of years throwing interceptions. He's top five. He's top three quarterback in the NFL. If I had to list the top three quarterbacks in the NFL, it would be Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson. That's your three. That's my three top in the NFL. Joe Burrow went to the Super Bowl. Yeah. And his defense helped him beat the Tennessee Titans. I think like, and so to beat this man, you need pressure. You need to contain him. I showed you in the PFF. You have to keep him in the pocket. You can't let him start running around. But also, he is a huge human being. I'll tell you how tall this man is. He's big. He's a big man. He's six foot five, 237 pounds. He's my height. I'm the same height as Josh Allen. I could be Josh Allen. I could not be Josh Allen. But he's a big man. And he runs a 475. And he's fast. And he's physical. So you don't want him running all over the place. So you want to contain him. You want to send pressure up in his face. You want to get your hands up. Like when we were played them week two, Clay's Campbell had a nice smackdown, and you know, Clay's Campbell's gonna be our guy in hoping and praying to get after Josh Allen. But due to the fact that we can't, and I'm about to get to this this next part, due to the fact that we can't get an organic pass rush off of our front four, there's the blitzing happening. And we've already came out and he said he does not like putting spies up because nine times out of ten, the spy doesn't get to the guy. And in the end of it, you have 10 on the field instead of 11. So, you know, if you're going to blitz, you have to do like a contained blitz like I showed you. But it's imperative. Imperative. That if you want to beat this Buffalo Bills team, Josh Allen can't have a day. Josh Allen can't be running around, having fun, uh, gaining yards with his legs, making ridiculous throws off of one foot. Like, he cannot have a day if you hunt any type of chance to beat the Buffalo Bills. You know what he does against the Miami Dolphins? He has a day every flipping time we play him. Actually, last time we played in week two, he didn't have a day, but he didn't need to have a day because you know who did? James Cook had a flipping day. Hence back to number one, stopping the run. So that's number two, my number three, and it's a long one. I think I couldn't fit the whole thing in. So you're just going to get better assignment, but it's mostly on the defense because again, last week, why was certain people covering certain people? If that makes any sense, <laughs> why was David Long Jr. covering McBride? Why was Jordan Poyer covering McBride? Why was Cam Smith covering Marvin Harrison Jr. as much as he was? It's like, drives me nuts that 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 you sit back and you're like let's put david long jr on mcbride 
and see how that goes. Oh, that didn't go well. Let's put Jordan Poyer on him because Jordan Poyer is, you know what I'm saying? And like it coincides with also the pass rush because I did it in the film breakdown. You saw the Jalen Ramsey touchdown that was given up to Marvin Harrison Jr. Man was lined up far left, right? He was the outside receiver all the way on the left. So I'm the quarterback. He's all the way on my left. This man ran all across her all the way across the field and caught the touchdown in the front right of the end zone. Do you know how long it takes for these guys, even if they have a fast 40 time, to run the entire length of the football field? Well, I counted it. And Kyler Murray had five seconds to let that play develop because we can't get a pass rush. I have put on here time and time again, finish the sacks, get the pressure, can need this and that. But I don't have it on here this time because I don't think they can. Plain and simple. Number four, no mistakes. <laughs> no mistakes. Because... I don't know why I have to explain it. Penalties, drive killers, fumbles. Like Tua had three fumbles, one under center, um, one in the pocket. He was trying to step up, got the ball smacked out of his hands, and then the, the snap over, you know, <laughs> for a safety. Then we have the Julian Hill fumble. Think, thankfully, out of the four fumbles we had, only one of them were lost, and it was for two points. But it's like the penalties and then the broken coverages. And then that's where, again, number three comes in and all this stuff. It's just the no mistakes, please. Because you are facing the 2019 to now version. This is our Patriots. For two decades almost, give or take, we have to deal with the Patriots. We got to beat the Patriots if you want to win the division. We got to beat the Patriots if you want to win the division. Tom Brady, Tom Brady, Tom Brady. Can't, you got to be perfect. Tom Brady, Bill Belichick. You got to be perfect. Got to be perfect. It just transferred over to the Buffalo Bills. It's the 90s again. The difference is the 90s, we were competitive with them. We are not competitive with them. So now we're in a situation where we cannot have any mistakes because they will take advantage of it. Hence the playoff game two years ago. When we had Skylar Thompson in there, if Skylar Thompson doesn't throw those two interceptions that gave the Buffalo Bills points, we would have beat Buffalo in Buffalo with a seventh round quarterback. But we threw two interceptions, gave them the ball on our side of the field. Boom. They score points. We lost by what? Two in that game. No mistakes. Plain and simple. No mistakes. And then the last thing on my list you got to stop that run. I was just talking about James Cook. If we're going to be running the ball, we're going to be containing Josh Allen. You got to stop the run. Because if, if Josh Allen can just continue to turn around and hand the ball off to James Cook, and James Cook is just going to keep churning out six yards of carry, there's no point in even Josh Allen doing anything because they're just going to keep doing that. They're going to tire out our defense, and our offense is never going to see the field. So even if we are going tit for tat with scores, it don't matter because we can stop the run. You got to stop the run. One more time, you got to stop the run. Run the ball, stop the run. Those two things are paramount to football. And why are those two things paramount to football? Because it has to deal with the offensive line and the defensive line. Trenches win you games. How did the Texans lose to the New York Jets? It's because the New York Jets have a very good defensive front. And they were they blitz, they sacked. They even blitz. My apologies. They sacked Stroud eight, nine times. Nine times they sacked Stroud. That's how you win a game against a better team. Yes, the Texans didn't have their st starting receivers, but if you have a defensive front that can shut down the run, which they didn't because I have Mixon on my fantasy team. He did fantastic for me. But if you could shut down the run or get consistent pressure on the opposing quarterback, that changes a whole world, especially if it's organically from just your front four and not having to blitz Ramsey consistently or the safeties or the linebackers. We got to stop the run. So Miami Dolphins heading up north. Now, it's not going to be that cold. Today, I live in New Jersey. I'm in like 
middle north of New Jersey ish. Um, it was 82 degrees when I went trick or treating with my daughter. It was warm as all. So it's not going to be freezing cold like it would be if we went up there and played them in December. This is a game. It's not even this game. The Dolphins need to win nine out of the last 10 games to have a shot at the wild card. You got to get to 10 wins. Nine wins maybe gets you in. 10 wins, you have a good chance of, of you know, wild card. You ain't winning the division. The division's gone. Bills are too far ahead with like a three and a half game lead on us. And if they win this game, they will be a four game lead on us. There's just, you got to win every game almost. Buffalo has had our number. Like I said, I think they're 12 and 12 and one facing us over the last 13 games. Uh, I have no faith. I had little faith facing a very bad Patriot team, and we eked out a win 15 to 10. I had a little bit more faith against the Colts team. Offense couldn't do anything. We lost that game. I had more faith against the Cardinals. Our offense showed up, and our defense did not. So if we couldn't beat the Cardinals and we couldn't beat the Colts, now I'll say this, right? Colts, we didn't have two, uh, and the Titans, we didn't have two, and the Seahawks, we didn't have two. But if we can't beat the Cardinals with Tua and having facing the 26th, I think, ranked defense, and now we're going up against the 16th ranked defense in Buffalo, there is no part of my body that thinks we have a chance on Sunday. Now, I am predicting that the Buffalo Bills will beat the Miami Dolphins 38 to 20. I think we'll score points. I think we'll move the ball. I think we'll run the ball. I think Devon A. Chan will make some plays out of the backfield, whether running or catching, because the Bills, there's the Bills stigma has always been tackling in the open field. You can ask Dan Mitchell. We've talked about that time and time again on my channel and his channel. They struggle with tackling in the open field, uh, but they don't struggle with getting sacks, especially with that Oliver and um, if Von Miller's back. So I have the Dolphins scoring points, 20 points, but I have our defense unable to stop their offense and they're scoring 38. And I, this is what I wanted you to wait for. This is what I wanted you to come back and wait for. Because I have, you know, I've been talking about this on Twitter and I have people saying, wow, what happened to you? Or wow, they broke Doug or this or that. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> bookmark this. So, you know, if we win, you got to come back, blah, blah, blah. If the Dolphins beat the Buffalo Bills, I will come on here in the recap and I will have a whole not a long speech. I'm going to give it like a two minute monologue of how stupid I am of an individual, of a human being, of my football knowledge. I will go into a nice monologue of how I am a big dumb dumb and I know nothing about anything if the Miami Dolphins beat the Buffalo Bills. I do not see that happening. Now, the Rams, more of a possibility. The Raiders, I would give them a 60% chance of being the Raiders. Patriots, I think they'll beat the Patriots again. The Bills, I don't see it happening. I think they fall to two and six, and I think this seals the season for the Miami Dolphins. Now, if they beat the Buffalo Bills, then they have a very good chance of beating the Rams, beating the Patriots, and beating the Raiders. And by doing that and winning the next four games, you are sitting at six and five, and your season's not over. You go into a very hard stretch, but your season's not over. You lose to Buffalo. Your season's over. Right now, there is IVs in you. We got a you know, trach in. We're on a machine. It's beeping. Beep, beep. We got a chest tube in with the thing breathing for us. We're on life support. You lose to Buffalo. Season's over. There's no way on God's green earth you're going 10 straight um, to get to 10 and 6. Well, sorry. 11 and 6. No way on God's green earth. So, comment below. Let me know. And Bills fans, be gentle. I I, am, I was very nice to you guys. <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow. We got a video playing for you tomorrow. And I'll see you Sunday at 1. But like usual, stay classy. I'm Finn Todd.